Ben Keller, local mortgage and credit expert, and I'm excited today to produce this video, produce this webinar for you. Um, with the shift and the change in today's market, I'm getting a lot of questions on, um, and I'm in the mortgage industry, on short sales and foreclosures, and um, just a lot of questions surrounding that. So what a better time, not a better time, but not a better person to, to, be, to have here to interview. I've got Ed Finlan with John L. Scott, and I've actually hunted down Ed. He's a short sales specialist, and real quickly today, we're going to talk about some big questions that are coming up about short sales. So, real quick, Ed, introduce yourself to us, and uh, then we'll jump right into this. Sure. My name is Ed Finlan. I'm with uh, John L. Scott Real Estate. Um, Skagit, uh, shortsales.com is our website for short sales. Um, I've been in real estate about 10 years. Um, prior to that, I was in builder with my father and brother built in and around the Skagit County area. Um, how I got into this was kind of by accident. I just had somebody who needed to sell their house of, I don't know, about three and a half years ago and they there wasn't enough money to cover the loans and so I found out the hard way just you know, talking to the banks and figuring out how to do this um, and not to pat myself on the back but I probably do more short sales in and around Skagit County than Perfect. And that's how, I, that's how I found Ed, quite honestly. Um, in putting together this video, putting together this information, I needed to go to an expert. Um, I could research it on the internet, but better than that, I've had an opportunity to meet Ed for the past two months, and he definitely knows, uh, knows what he's talking about. You can look him up, John L. Scott, Ed Finlan. But for now, let's jump right into it. So these are some big questions, and we've gone over these, um, Ed and I have, but this is what I'm hearing from people. This is what other agents are hearing from sellers, and... Uh, getting emails and, and requests for more information on. So I do have some notes here, so please excuse the note sheet. But the first, the big one is, um, Ed, will doing a short sale cost me any money? If, and I'm going to assume that I'm the seller, so I'll play, I'll role play here. If I'm the seller, uh, will doing a short sale cost me anything? Not more, than like, more than likely not. Um, typically, um, all the selling costs of so commissions, escrow, title, any of that kind of thing is going to be paid by the lender. Or lenders. Okay. okay. Um, once in a great while, there will be an instance where a seller will be asked to bring money, you know, to closing. Again, it's kind of a lottery ticket thing. It, 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 I want to make sure that people know that it could happen. Yeah. Very unlikely. Okay. So you mentioned lenders. So let's say, let's say uh, I've got a first lender. For I'm just going to throw out an example: Bank of America. And let's say we took out a second mortgage to qualify for the house and 80-20. And my second lender is uh, Chase, for example. Is that going to be a problem if you have two lenders? Well, you pick the two that are <laughs> most the most difficult to work with, to be honest. But but I have successfully done short sales with both of those lenders. Okay. Um, it's not that it can't be done, particularly with those two. Yeah. Um, it's that it takes time. Um, these lenders are on their own time scale. They don't care what contracts say. They don't. They just don't okay. care. Um, so, buyer attrition, or where buyers initially show interest and then just get tired of the process, is our is our biggest obstacle. Okay. But but if to answer your question, yes, you it, it doesn't matter if there's one, two, three loans. Okay. They can be done. So they all. Function, they all function off the first lien holder, the first lender, and then once they approve it, then they go to the second. And maybe it, it's very much a case by case because in, in a fair amount of um, instances, what we, you know, for argument's sake, you owe 300 and on a really good day we can sell the house for 225 Well, the first, in your scenario, Bank of America, may be paid off okay. with that. Okay? Maybe they're not. Okay. It, it's, but it's very much a case by case. Okay. okay. You're going to have questions on this. Any questions, please just revert to him. We'll show his uh, email address down below and phone number when we, when we get over it. So um, on this call as well, we've got a lot of people on this call um, and on this, uh, on this video. So you may not get all your questions asked. So please use his email if you, uh, if you need to ask him any further questions. Okay, here's the big one. Are there any risks associated with a short sale? So, for example, tax consequences down the road. Three years from now, I'm gonna, am I going to get a knock on my door in my new house? And say, hey, listen, you owe us three hundred thousand dollars for uh, a back lien, or the difference. Let's say we sold our, we owed three hundred thousand, and we sold it for two hundred. Two, three years down the road, am I going to get hit up for that difference? The short answer is no. Okay. Um, 
the bottom line is, is that for the title to transfer to this new owner, everything's going to have to be cleaned up. Um, what your lien holder or mortgage you know, company could do is go after a summary judgment in court and, in essence, sue you mm -hmm. for that money. The chances of them doing that are pretty low. Okay. Um, not to say it doesn't happen, but it doesn't happen very often. Okay. Okay. The more likely scenario is that they're going to send you a 1099 okay. and, and for, that, um, for the difference of what the home was sold for and what you owe. Okay, as if you made that money. Okay. Okay. Back in the old days, you had to pay tax, income yeah. tax on that. Um, because of a law that was passed in 2007, more than likely you're not going to have to pay taxes on that. Okay. There's obviously you know different circumstances yeah. for everyone, but more than likely you won't have to pay taxes okay. on that. Um, so that's the tax situation. Okay. As far as somebody knocking on your door down the road, it will all be cleaned up and when you sign paperwork and the title transfers to them, you'll know exactly what, if anything, okay. is go you're going to be getting yourself into. Um, the ability to get a loan down the road, um, actually, you're probably a better person yeah, to answer that. Yeah, and I'll jump into that in the next question, but real okay. quick, because I've got another uh, in regards to ta tax consequences. As a matter of full, just a disclaimer, contact your CPA or tax advisor for more information on this or to, to clarify this, but I uh, just got to do my taxes recently and I asked a question while I was in there because a lot of my clients I've referred to a law firm to help them with loan modifications and if you get that 1099 and it's an owner-occupied home, what my CPA was telling me is that if you lived in it, you fall under the capital gains laws. If you lived in it two out of the last five years and let's say you had to pay taxes or it, you showed a um, a profit on you know fifty eight thousand dollars, for example, um, you fall under the capital gains laws, mm -hmm. so you may be you may be okay. So the tax consequences associated with doing a short sale may benefit you. So again, talk to Ed and and again run it by a CPA because neither Ed nor myself and, 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 and that's a very good advice. Um, one of the things that I tell all of my short sale clients is when there's will be a certain point where I'm going to look you in the eye and say, now's the time to talk to your tax advisor. And now is the time to talk to an attorney. Perfect. Because um, neither one of us are attorneys and cannot give legal advice, and neither one of us are tax professionals and really can't give yeah. tax advice. And and I've got a, a slew of people that I can refer people to if they don't have some. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So what are the risks? The first one was tax consequences. Here's the big one. What will it do to my credit? I, I I'm going to refer back to you. I, I I know this, but I think you probably have a better handle on it than I do. Okay. So. I see credit reports all the time, that's what I do for a living, and I actually have surrounded myself with credit repair attorneys that if somebody comes to me and they have a bankruptcy or they have a foreclosure or they have a mortgage late, what I know right now, I don't know, everybody's different. Let's say Ed has an 800 credit credit score and I have a 620 credit score and I file and do a short sale and you file and do a short sale, it's going to affect his credit more than it's going to affect mine. So the credit consequences in regards to what is it going to do to my credit? A short sale is going to be better than a foreclosure, meaning a short sale, my attorneys can get a short sale removed from your credit in a 60 to 90 day period and it's done. A foreclosure is public records. A foreclosure is going to stick with you and it's going to, and it's going to be public knowledge for up to seven years. It's going to affect you in regards to qualifying for a mortgage or qualifying for credit much more adversely than a short sale would. So again, if you have questions on that, you can contact me and we can go into further detail there. Um, here's a good one. Okay, so I need to do a short sale. We're upside down on our house. Times are tough. What if the bank doesn't approve me for a short sale? Are they just going to take it from me? Well, in the end, if, if, if we can't get the short sale done, the, I mean, the other alternative, there are other alternatives. One is foreclosure. Um, there's a thing called forbearance, which is a lot like a loan modification. There's loan modifications. Um, you're probably better at talking about that. And then there's a, another one called what's called the deed in lieu um, of foreclosure. What a deed in lieu of foreclosure is, is basically you sign paperwork that says, hey bank, here's your house back. No harm, no foul. Really, there's not much in it for the person in that situation. There's not much in it for them. All you're doing is saving the lender tons of money for not having to foreclose. Yeah. 